From a product that can whip your ass to a product that can wipe your ass, we have it all covered for you. When I was a kid, all I needed to wash my body was water and a bar of soap. Today we have face wash, hair shampoo, beard shampoo, hair conditioner, beard conditioner. We have been conditioned to rely on them. Name any fruit and you have a face wash based on it, claiming to mimic its intended benefit. Too many things. So now I don't want anything. Okay. Just these things, 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 things. Okay. Everything has to be done. Thank you. I'm going to make things easy for you by covering following three things. First, understanding the chemical formulation of soap, shampoo and conditioner and which one do we really need. Second, a new product has been launched in the market piggy riding on the COVID wave. I will strip the product. Third, why it's gimmicky as hell and I won't purchase it and so should you. Let's get started. Like I said, when I was a kid, all I needed to wash my body was water and a bar of soap. As I was growing up, number of products was growing as well. A product of our desires and vanity targeting our self-esteem. As I was getting taller, claims by marketeers kept getting taller. And if you don't purchase, if you don't consume, you felt smaller. A fair product, a fairness product, a product guaranteeing shiny, silky, smooth hair. Different kinds of shampoos, different kinds of face wash, claiming they are kind to our skin. A face wash for day, another for night, it didn't quite feel alright. All marketed as natural, claiming being made out of fruit extracts. But what is natural? Most of these products have synthetic preservatives. Naturally, they are not natural but artificial. These are few fruit variant face washes. Citrus, peach, strawberry, lemon, papaya, grape, apple, WTF. Look at the ingredient label and you'll find that these fruit extracts are listed last. Ingredients are sorted from high weightage to low weightage on product labels. As a rule of thumb, the first three are the major constituents of a product. Fruit extracts, they are just a marketing ploy. What goes in your tummy matters more than what goes on your face. What we are doing is that we are eating less and applying more. What we need to apply in our life is to eat more fruits and apply less on our body. If you agree, comment below and keep watching, as the comments and watch time will help with the YouTube algorithm. To make soap, we either use vegetable fat or animal fat. Let's revisit basic chemistry before we proceed further. Acid plus base is equal to salt plus water is the standard neutralization reaction. Soap making utilizes the same concept and is known as saponification. In this process, animal or vegetable fatty acids are converted into soap, a fatty acid salt and alcohol, glycerin. These salts are known as surfactants and responsible for cleaning the grime. Everything else that is added do not contribute to cleaning the grime, rather preserving the soap, adding fragrance to it, improving the lathering or any other auxiliary benefit. Like glycerin is a byproduct used as a base in moisturizers. Depending on the total fat mass, TFM of the soap, they are classified into different grades. Grade 1 is considered the best with greater than 76% fat mass. Always look for high TFM as the ones with lower TFM generally contain fillers to reduce the cost of soap. Higher TFM also NGOs better lathering as surfactants normally tend to have lathering properties. Fun Fact 1 Ever notice the bubbly white smudges appearing on old oil paintings? It is formed due to reaction between the metallic pigments and oil in the paint.
Soap doesn't lather well with hard water. No lather, no bubbles. Which impacts the ability to clean the grime. The worst enemy of soap is hard water. Also, one of the worst enemy of human skin as well as hair is hard water. The pH of human skin is 4.7, that is human skin is slightly acidic. Sebaceous glands secrete sebum that forms the acid mantle on skin by combining with sweat. This acid mantle can combat harmful microbes and damaging free radicals that might increase the aging process. In general, the pH scale ranges from 0 to 14 with 7 considered neutral. The lower numbers are acidic while the upper levels are considered alkaline. pH of hard water is 8.5, not good for the skin. Sea water has a similar pH. pH of soft water is 6.5, which is good for the skin. Rain water as well as milk fall in this range. pH of conventional soap is 10, not good for the skin for prolonged and daily usage. The thing to consider here is to use water in soap that have a pH value closer to our skin, which is slightly acidic. Fun fact 2. Newborn babies have a skin pH closer to 7 that is neutral. With time, they attain the acidic pH in the range of 5. What makes shampoo different from soap is, first, shampoo contains synthetic surfactants that act as great frothing agents, thus creating more lather and bubble. Sodium laureth sulfate and sodium laurel sulfate are two most popular as well as controversial surfactants. They are also used in toothpaste as well as hand wash for bubbling property. Check the contents of the products you have at home and verify for yourself. Better avoid these and use sulfate-free products. Second, they contain foam boosters like coco betaine. This further boosts the lathering process. Third, they have lower pH value and good brands are pH balanced to match the skin pH. Fourth, fourth is an ingredient to produce a pearlescent effect like glycol distillate. This adds that shiny look to your shampoo. This is an aesthetic effect. Pure marketing gimmick. People love shiny things. Fifth, the number of preservatives, fragrances, moisturizing oils, vitamins, and miscellaneous fruit extracts are way more than a regular soap. Fruit extracts have nothing to do with the cleansing and they are purely used to make a product stand out. Let's talk about conditioners in three lines. Conditioners have one extra constituent that is emulsifiers. Emulsifiers help combine oil and water so the conditioner won't separate. It also acts as a softening agent that can leave hair feeling silky soft. Like I said, when I was growing up, basket of products kept growing with it. When I hit puberty, I had the first patch of beard follicles sprouting up. Not in its full glory though. By the time I graduated, the beard growth was full, blessed genetically. So was the consumer world blessed with a new product, beard shampoo and beard oil. Beard shampoo and beard oil market is the most beard market I have seen and the beardos fall for it. The answer that marketeers have against such claims is that using other products will strip off the natural oil known as sebum produced from the sebaceous gland, thus making your skin dry and hair coarse. I can vouch for this that the shampoo that goes on your scalp can be used to wash your beard safely. Same goes for the oil. The bottom line is to use, first, soft water for bathing solves poor lathering problem. Second, pH balanced shampoo solves problem caused by irritation due to alkaline soaps. Third, sulfate free shampoo as these are not carcinogenic. The purpose of soap and shampoo is to clean the skin and hair. If you have noticed, while shampooing there is not enough lathering in the first round while there is excessive in the second round. The reason is that in the first round surfactants are attached to the oil, dirt and grime. Hence, not all are available for foaming. 
By the second round, the scalp is already clean and hence there is excessive foaming. Foaming enables better cleaning, though warranted in moderation as excessive chemicals have detrimental impact. By doing away with a product that is providing auxiliary benefits of foam boost, fragrance or pearless scent, you are doing yourself a favor. All depends on your preference. Here is a resource that might be helpful to pick up your next product. Also note that 2-in-1 and 3-in-1 are one of the most gimmicky products. A 2-in-1 shampoo cum conditioner is nothing but a shampoo with extra oil and emulsifiers. My recommendation is to pick a mild shampoo which is pH balanced and use it as a body wash, beard wash, shampoo and face wash. If you do not like this regimen, you can always switch back. A new product has been launched in the market, it goes by the name, that which must not be named. Just kidding. It's a washing liquid aka shampoo that can wash fruit, vegetable and meat. It already exists in the European and US market but has been relaunched in India. Marketeers are simply trying to capitalize on the insecurity of people in these COVID times. Make hay while sun shines. While these brands are advocating cleaning veggies, fruits and meat using their naturally derived cleansing agent, FSSAI advises not using disinfecting sprays, cleaning wipes or soap on fresh produce as this can harm its quality and hamper the cleaning process. Only fresh water should be used in the cleaning process. Taking a look at the ingredients, soap and surfactants have been used though not as toxic as SLS or SLES but they still fall in the category of detergents. The natural extract as marketed comprises lower proportion in the overall ingredient, the usual marketing ploy used by these guys. Here is something interesting that I found out. Let's look at the ingredients of this popular brand. The difference between veggie and fruit wash and meat wash is inclusion of salt and NACL in the ingredients for meat wash. You are being charged INR20 extra for this sodium chloride. You can purchase 1 kg of salt with that amount. Perhaps you can add salt to the veggie wash and ignore meat wash at all. Neem on the front cover of the product is missing from the meat wash and it is replaced by salt. Though neem is listed as the ingredient on the back side. Guess why? On a side note. Be careful while washing meat as it can spread bacteria onto one's hand, work surfaces, clothing and kitchen equipment and may contaminate other food items. These products claim removing dust, dirt and 99.9% .9 germs and pesticides. Running water does a fine job of removing the dust, dirt and pesticides. What these products mention is the surface disinfecting. What about the pesticide sprays that might seep within the veggies or bacteria found bone deep? To kill off any bacterial contamination, food should be cooked thoroughly. If you want to purchase these products, you are free to do so. Though studies done over the decades claim that water is as good as veggie washes. This is my recommendation. Running water and gentle scrubbing will wash the dirt, dust and pesticide. Don't end up cross-contaminating the kitchen slabs, accessories and other food produce by splashing water all over the place. Thoroughly cooking the food, especially meat, is the most important part. Acid is the enemy of bacteria. Use vinegar rinse for peace of mind. Vinegar is an acid. What would be its pH? The pH of vinegar is 2.5. Fun Fact 3 Gastric acid found in the stomach lining is not just a digestive fluid but also acts as a disinfectant. So, are you going to buy these products? Please comment and like the video as it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and stay safe. Signing off by commenting below whether I'm going to buy these products or not.